Here we will learn the gag reflex, which relies on the glossopharyngeal nerve for its afferent loop and the vagus nerve for its efferent loop. To illustrate the gag reflex, show that soft palate stimulation sends an afferent impulse along the glossopharyngeal nerve to the glossopharyngeal sensory nuclei, the spinal trigeminal and solitary tract nuclei, which excite motor neurons in nucleus ambiguous, which excites the vagus nerve to produce pharyngeal constriction. As well show that nucleus ambiguous stimulates the trigeminal motor nucleus, cranial nerve 5 for jaw opening, and the hypoglossal nucleus, cranial nerve 12 for tongue thrust. Next let's illustrate the supranuclear innervation of the palate. First draw the bilateral nucleus ambiguous nuclei. Then show that each nucleus ambiguous innervates the ipsilateral side of the palate. Now show that each cerebral hemisphere projects corticonuclear fibers to each nucleus ambiguous, but show that most corticonuclear fibers go to the contralateral nucleus. To solidify our understanding of this pathway, let's see what happens when it is injured. Redraw the hemispheres and the bilateral nucleus ambiguous nuclei. Show that in an upper motor neuron lesion, such as a stroke, the side of the palate contralateral to the stroke is weak and the side contralateral to the intact hemisphere is strong because the majority of fibers from the intact cortex go to the contralateral nucleus ambiguous. Next again draw the hemispheres and the bilateral nucleus ambiguous nuclei. Show that in a lower motor neuron injury, such as a direct lesion to the nucleus ambiguous itself, Corticonuclear innervation is preserved to both nucleus ambiguous nuclei, but there is complete peripheral fiber loss on the side of the lesion, manifesting with palatal paralysis on that side, and normal strength on the opposite side. This concludes our diagram.